Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. We're getting there at the end. Just one more hands-on lab to go, and this is the biggie. How to interact with the Windows Store. Now, mind you, we're not going to demonstrate the process of submitting your app for approval and inclusion in the Windows Store. After all, we're just building an app that really somebody else built, okay? But uh, we're looking at this from a programmatic perspective. How can we enable a trial version of our app uh, or limit the features or limit the time that the user can use the app for a trial period? How can we sell in-app items? How can we retrieve licensing information for an app in order to determine whether the app is in trial mode or which, if any, in-app items that have been licensed for this particular user? So this should be really fun. And if you're already imagining an app for sale, this should help flesh out your business model and your strategy and how to make this a reality. All right, so now we're in hands-on lab number eight, monetizing your app trials and in-app purchases. We're looking at exercise number one, detect trial versions. And we're gonna be modifying, first of all, the about page that we added back in lesson number 29 to include licensing information and to determine if the user is running the app as a trial. Uh, and if they are, then they'll see a purchase button. And so then we'll retrieve the price for the full version of the app from the Windows Store uh, so that we can dynamically change the price if we want to. Uh, so we can occasionally run a sale or we can test the various price points uh, that we had in mind. So making this work locally without having our app featured in the Windows Store, without having the ability to get into the Windows Store and manage the pricing and so forth, that will require that we mock up the Windows Store somehow. Now fortunately we can use a special class called the Simulator. And that will help us simulate the communication with our app and the Windows Store. So if you read through the instructions, they call for us to include a file called license.xml. Uh, it's included in the resources for the labs. It gives the current app simulator class the information that it needs to simulate the interaction and the data that's available from the Windows Store API that our, our app will eventually want to call directly to the Windows Store, okay? So the instructions encourage us to take a look at this file. Let's go ahead and add it. And so we want to add an existing item to the data folder. And we're gonna look on, I'm gonna look on my desktop at our WinStore app dev underscore CS slash resources slash data and I'm gonna find this license.xml file and I'll open it up and uh, the instructions from the lab encourage us to take a look at this file and warns us that since the app is pulling data from this file each time it loads we can expect each time that we run the app for it to be reset to whatever these settings are so if if it's reset if it's set here in trial mode then every time we we restart the app it'll it'll be in trial mode again we're not making changes to this file dynamically from our app we're only reading from it okay uh, and so as you can see in the XML file if we really wanted to we can easily modify the trial we can modify the date of expiration for the trial we can also define any additional add-in products and whether they have licensed that product or not. So in this case, at some point, we'll be offering Italian recipes and selling those in our app, all right? We we'll also see here that we have um, the Italian recipes product and its price. We see the app itself, the full version of the app, currently $12.99, its name, its description, and uh, so forth, okay? So now, just want to make hopefully what should be an obvious point here, but once we're ready to send this app to the Windows Store for inclusion, we would want to remove this configuration file as well as any code that we write in this and the subsequent labs that access this file uh, because this is just for mocking up that interaction. Once we have the real interaction with the Windows Store, we won't need this anymore, right? Okay, so let's continue on here. It asks us to open the app.xaml.cs and add the following statements to the on launched. 
And so here what we're doing is just opening up that license.xml file and then we're going to load the simulator file into the current app simulator, which is expecting this, this, this license file. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that and then go into our app.xaml.cs and then let's scroll down and find where we're supposed to insert it. I believe it is right around here. And so while I didn't address this specifically in the, in the uh, previous lesson, this line of code is making sure that you have internet access before you try to register with the uh, uh, Windows notification services. So if we do have internet connection, now would be a good time to go ahead and uh, then access the Windows Store API. And here we'll just simulate that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is modify the about page. And we're also going to create a new app license data source. So this will be a data source. That ultimately communicates with the Windows Store API to determine licensing information for the app, whether it's trial version or full. Uh, what the price is and so forth. Also, we're going to need to change the about page later on in this task so that it can display the trial version status as well as the purchase button. And then we're going to bind to the data that we retrieve from the current app simulator class uh, to display that on the about page. All right, so let's follow these instructions. We're going to add a new item and call it app license data source. I'll just go ahead and copy that. And we want to put this in our data model folder. So I'm going to right click, add class, and I'm going to call this the app license data source.cs. Let's go ahead and select all. And I believe we're going to paste the code that we have here in our instructions over it, and then we'll look at it. I think the first thing to notice from previous discussions is that this implements I notify property changed. And so if we look in the constructor, we can see that if the license information were to change, we have an on license changed event handler. This on license changed event handler will then update the app and anything that binds to it so that it has the freshest information. And how this will come into play is that if a user makes a purchase in app we or they want to um, they want to uh, upgrade to the full version of our app then we're going to want to refresh any controls that are binding to the information in our app license data source so that for example on the about page we say oh you've already purchased it then show the purchase information remove the button that allows them to purchase for example okay and then there are some other things like public properties that allow us to get to uh, various uh, attributes of the license information itself, whether the app is licensed, whether it's tr in trial mode, uh, some additional license information, like whether it's in trial version or the date that it's valid to, and of course the price, the formatted price. All right, we have a little work to do. You can see we're missing something here. Uh, this is going to essentially dispatch any of the updates to run on a second thread in our app so that our app continues to be fast and fluid, uh, and yet updates are being made to the UI, uh, specifically uh, anything that binds to these three properties. And we've seen this property changed event args. This dispatcher is new. Uh, and we're going to add it now, I believe, in the very next step of our instructions here. All right, so here we go. We're going to add this to the um, as a member and property of the app class. And it says, before we go to test our license, we need to cache the app's dispatcher 
because the license change event can fire in a background thread and we are using data binding to update our UI from within the event. So again, we want this to execute in the background and keep our app um, uh, responsive while the user is working inside of it. Okay, so we're going to add this to the app.xaml class. So let's go there. Uh, we already have it open. And let's just go to the very, very top of the class and paste it here. All right, and then what we want to do is go to uh, the about user control and we're essentially going to be adding this statement and then modifying the current text that just says trial version with adding a button that allows the user to make a purchase. So let's go ahead and make these changes first to the declaration of the user control. So the about user control, here we go and we'll just replace this entire declaration. And then we're going to add this boolean to visibility converter and again the uh, property we're going to be binding to is the is trial and we're going to need our boolean to visibility converter in order to change it from true false to visible collapsed right so let's start that process Let's go to the resources. Oh, we'll need to add the, that there. And you can see that it doesn't find this app last license data source just yet. So what we may need to do is build our solution, build that that app data uh, app license license data source so that it can find it. It built successfully. Now, if we look back in the about user control, uh, that blue squiggly line is gone. Great. And then the final part of this will be to change out that text block, the trial version text block. And we'll just add this new licensing info text block and the button that allows the user to uh, purchase the full version. All right, the next instructions say that we should uh, run the application, display the charms, tap the settings charm, go to the about settings menu to display the about page, confirm that a purchase button appears and that the price is $12.99. Then we, what we wanna do is go back into the license XML and change the price to $8.99. And so we'll run the application again and uh, we should make sure that the price is reflected and then we want to open it again, change it back to 1299 and change from is trial from true to false. And then notice the, the change in the text beneath the title of the app. Okay. So here we go. Let's take those steps. All right. So let's go to the charm settings charm. We'll go to about. All right, so you can see we're in trial version and we can upgrade to the full version for $12.99. So let's exit out. I'm gonna change the license from $12.99 to $8.99, run. And this is just to reinforce the idea that we're working with this configuration file to modify aspects of our, of our uh, app as it would appear in the Windows Store and how to integrate with, with that information that we would pull down from ultimately the Windows Store API. Okay, so now the full ver version is $8.99. And then the last thing we're called to do is change that price back and then change from is trial true to is trial false. And this time, go to the about page, we can see that it is valid until December 31st, 2022. So we have the full version now. Okay, great. Okay, so our first pass of this was extremely simple, but we got some core concepts under our belt, the value of the simulator, 
the class that allows us to simulate interaction with the Windows API and that it's only meant for development time, the fact that we can make changes to that configuration file, the license.xml file, in order to simulate the changes we can make through uh, the management portal, I guess you'd say, of the Windows Store for our app, and then see that reflected in our app. And then also we're going, we've wired up some, uh, this app license data source. And so it is going to spin off a thread that will make any updates to our UI whenever uh, licensing information from the Windows Store API is changed. And we're going to do that in the next lesson. So we've got a lot of good groundwork set up and we'll continue on in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.